I do have plenty of videos on my channel about React Tree Fiber and TreeJS, but I was still missing one on Frelt, arguably one of the best 3D frameworks on the web right now. Frelt unifies the simplicity of Svelte and the power of FreeJS in a way that I really, really like. It's super simple and it just makes sense when using it. I have a simple project here that I want to share with the community where I've built a small scene with a spaceship that follows your mouse with a spring-based motion. And we're also creating an interesting animation as we fly somewhere at the speed of light. If you were wondering, yes, I took inspiration from Warframe's loading screen while making this project, and it took me slightly more than 200 lines to get here. So let's get started and see how to build great things with Frelt. Let's do it. Getting started with Frelt is super easy. We just have to run this command to set up the project. However, this will make it difficult for me to make sure that you'll run the same versions that I'll be running since development of Frelt is very quick. Thus, if you do encounter problems while following these tutorials, remember that you can use the same dependencies that I'm using by cloning this branch, episode 0, on the repo of this project, which I'll link in the description of the video. Having that said, let's go ahead and create a Frelt project. We'll first start by hitting enter. Directory is not empty, but we'll continue anyway. No TypeScript, Prettier can be useful. Then we'll need Frelt Extras and the model pipeline, which is useful to create reusable model throughout this project. Then we'll hit enter. We don't have to initialize a Git repository, already have one. And then we'll install the dependencies with npm and we'll be ready to go. And after the process is finished, let's run npm run dev. And if all went well, we'll be welcomed by this scene with some objects in it and the standard camera movements. I've pushed the content of my setup inside the branch, episode 0. And again, this will be linked in the description of the video in case you want to use the same version of the library that I'm using. And now we can start to take a deeper look at what the npm create command made for us. This is the standard layout of a Svelte project. We'll focus on this tutorial on the specifics of Frelt and like React Tree Fiber. Inside app.svelte, we have a canvas object that contains a scene. And inside this scene component, we can access all of the hooks provided by Canvas, which is why most of the logic of our app will be contained in the scene component rather than here inside app.svelte. Inside scene.svelte, we have all the elements of the 3D scene we loaded a moment ago. Let's start with the T notation. The T component gives us the means to use any FreeJS object as a Svelte component and to easily add these elements into the scene graph exactly like we're used to do in React Tree Fiber. Some elements are not standard FreeJS objects or are built on top of them. In that case, we won't see the T notation used to reference them. For example, both orbit controls and grid are being used without the T notation. Since FreeJS does not export these objects, they're created outside of the standard TreeJS library. Everything else is pretty much self-explanatory. We have a perspective camera of which we're specifying the position and the field of view. Then the orbit controls. This is the object that gives us the option of rotating the scene around, zooming in, zooming out, and interestingly, this appears inside the perspective camera, unlike React Tree Fiber, where this object can appear at the top level of the component. And then we have a directional light, of which we're specifying the intensity and the position. Now, note that we're using the dot notation here to access a specific property of an object. Every time we create a directional light, a position is also created internally, and we can access this object with the dot notation if we want to, to set specific properties of this object. We can either run the constructor of the object, so create a new vector by specifying an array and setting it here like we're doing with the perspective camera. Otherwise, we can specify each of the properties of this vector by using the dot notation, which can be nested as much as we want for as many properties as the object contains. And Grid is an interesting expert from Frelt Extras. There are a lot of useful components coming from Frelt Extras. This one specifically creates a three-dimensional grid that lives inside our scene and we're setting it as a grid of white lines that is fading at a, distance, at a distance of 25 units from the center of the scene. Float does exactly what it does in React Tree Fiber. All of the objects that live inside a float component will, well, float. Float applies an animation to these objects that slowly moves them in space to easily add a touch of motion in our scenes. And the mesh component also behaves exactly like it does in React Tree Fiber. So if we want to instantiate objects into the scene, we declare them by specifying a mesh, then setting a geometry, which is 
automatically attached to the geometry property of the mesh component and a material, which will specify the appearance of the geometry. And now that we're done with introductions, let's start to actually develop our project by deleting almost everything and setting new values for the camera position and the directional light source. Next, we'll focus on loading the spaceship model in our scene. And for this project, I found this beautiful one from Sao Sinio. You can download the model directly here from Sketchfab or from the models folder in the repo of the project under the main branch. And you would just have to click the download button here. And since we're here, we're also going to download the textures under the textures folder, the energy beam opacity of PNG and start the PNG, which will be used for the stars in a later episode of this series. Great. I've placed the assets inside the static folder and now we're ready to process our model by running this command to generate a reusable model component. And this step is identical to generating a GLTF to JSX file in React Tree Fiber. I've run the command and it generated spaceship.svelte, which is creating a copy of all of the nodes of the GLTF file and referencing the geometry and materials of each of these nodes. Here comes an ND, the away block from Svelte, which I personally feel is a very clean way of dealing with promises. There's also a new property, the is property, which can inject in the scene graph objects that have been created inside script blocks. In this case, this component is just a reference to the group object created here. Notice also the usage of rest prop inside the ref group, which means in practice that inside scene.svelte, if we reference the spaceship, when we pass properties to the spaceship like position X, Y, and Z, these will be directly applied to the group object that is being referenced by this component. And before we can use this component, we'll have to apply some small modifications. As soon as the GLTF file is ready, we'll need to fix the rendering of the transparent objects. We have two meshes that are transparent, but unfortunately their properties are not being set in a way that is being appropriately rendered in 3JS. So we'll have to apply these four lines to these two meshes, or rather the material of these two meshes, to fix the rendering of these transparent objects. Then I've changed the transformations of this group. Originally it was just scale 0.001, now I've added also rotation and position, and then all the meshes will receive and cast shadows, so I've added these two properties to all the meshes except the last two that are part of the cockpit geometry which doesn't need to cast shadows to the other meshes. And at last I'm importing spaceship and side scene that's felt. And there we have it. Our model is ready for prime time and we can spin and zoom in on our new Frel scene. You can find the code of the setup so far in the episode one branch of this Git repo, which I'll link in the description of the video. We'll wrap up part one here and we'll continue the project on the next video where we'll animate the movements of the starship as we move our mouse inside the canvas. See you on part two.